All right. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Alicia Cordes Mayo. I'm the Communications Director at DEED. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, today, we have Deputy Commissioner Kevin McKinnon sending in for Commissioner Verilek, who has a scheduling conflict. So glad to have Commissioner McKinnon back, or Deputy Commissioner. You might remember he was our interim commissioner uh, before Commissioner Verilek joined us. So just as a reminder to mitigate echoes, please keep your devices muted. Uh, you can type your questions in the chat or use the raise hand function at the end. And if you have any technical difficulties, uh, reach out to Sammy and our team. I just dropped her name in the chat there. And with that, we will get started. So over to you, Deputy Commissioner McKinnon. Well, thanks, uh, Alicia, and thanks to all of you for being here with us today uh, to look at our most recent employment data. The Minnesota labor market situation held steady uh, in February. The unemployment rate remained at 2.7%. Uh, Nationally, the unemployment rate ticked up two tenths of a percentage point to 3.9%. Our labor force participation rate is at 67.9%, and we added more than 1,000 people to the labor force from January to February. The national labor force participation rate stayed uh, at 62.5%. As you know, Minnesotans participate uh, in the labor force at a much higher rate than the nation as a whole, but our population is aging, uh, and as people get into their 60s and 70s, uh, many people want to retire. The state is working to draw more younger workers to Minnesota and to help more people who aren't in the labor market or who are underemployed prepare for and land jobs in high demand sectors. Earlier this week, we announced 35 grantees that will implement the Drive for Five workforce initiative. Drive for Five is an innovative job training and placement initiative grounded in industry sector partnerships designed to align uh, employer needs with training programs in five high growth career fields that also offer family sustaining wages. Those fields are caring professions, education, manufacturing, technology, and the trades. Over the next 15 months, our grantees will prepare people for career track and uh, to attain family sustaining wage positions in those fields. We've also added chambers of commerce and industry associations who will work to place those training participants with employment in those five fields. Drive for Five will help workers, employers, and our entire state economy by connecting people with the employers who need them. Turning now to jobs, job growth also held steady in February in Minnesota. From January to February, we gained 100 jobs. The private sector lost 1,600 jobs, down 0.1%, which was offset by 1,700 job gains in government. Over the month uh, in Minnesota, government and five other super sectors gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis. Other big gainers in Minnesota were professional and business services, which gained 1,200 jobs, and manufacturing, which gained 800. The U.S. total non-farm employment and private sector jobs were both up 0.2% over the month. Over the year, Minnesota gained 37,500 payroll jobs, up 1.3%. Overall, U.S. employment grew 1.8% over the year. Regionally, the Rochester MSA, Metropolitan Statistical Area, saw 4,341 new jobs over the year. That's up 3.6% since last February. The Minneapolis-St. Paul MSA had the biggest job growth by numbers, up 20, 000, over 20,000 or 1.1% over the year. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to our Labor Market Information Director, Angela. Angelina Wynn, for uh, her presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Commissioner. I'm going to share details by super sector now. Um, so over the month, six super sectors in Minnesota gained jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis, and they are government. Uh, biggest gainer, um, government saw a growth of 1,700 jobs, up 0.4%. Professional and business services gained 1,200 jobs, up 0.3%. Manufacturing gained 800 jobs, up 0.2%. Other services gained 600 jobs, up 0.5%. Information gained 200 jobs, up 0.5%. And education and health services gained 200 jobs. But because it's a huge super sector, um, it's a 0% change. Five super sectors lost jobs over the month. 
Uh, the biggest loser was construction. Construction lost 3,000 jobs, down 2.3%. Trade, transportation, and util utilities lost 600 jobs, down 0.1%. Financial activities lost 500 jobs, down 0.3%. Leisure and hospitality, hospitality lost 400 jobs, down 0.1%. And mining and logging lost 100 jobs, uh, but because it's a small super sector, uh, it means 1.4% um, decline. So overall, Minnesota gained 100 jobs over the month on a seasonally adjusted basis, which translates to a 0% change over the month. The private sector lost 1,600 jobs, down 0.1%. The prior month report for January, um, seasonally adjusted job growth was revised up uh, 4,900 jobs. So the final estimate is that we gained 7,900 jobs between December and January. Next slide, please. Our labor force size increased by 1,140 people over the month. So we are now close to uh, 3,095,000 people uh, in our labor force for February. The number of employed um, decreased by 170 people and the number of unemployed increased by more than 1,300 people. Our labor force is still smaller than what it was pre-pandemic. Um, so about 30, a little more than 36,800 people smaller um, than February 2020, but um, still hanging in there. Um, our labor force participation rate ticked down one tenth of a, of a percentage point to 67.9% for February. So still hovering around 68% for a while. Next slide, please. Now I'm gonna talk about over the year growth by super sector. So over the year, Minnesota gained 37,565 payroll jobs, which is 1.3% growth. The US, uh, over the year growth rate is 1.8%. Our private sector gained 15,274 jobs, up 0.6%. And by comparison, the U.S. private sector grew 1.6%. So overall, it's a, it's a mixed bag. We saw six super sectors uh, gain jobs over the year and five super sectors lost jobs over the year. So for the gainers, uh, governments gained more than 22,000 jobs, up 5.3%, uh, much faster than the U.S. growth rate of 2.8%. And growth was healthy across all sectors in uh, Minnesota for government, especially local government. Education and health services gained almost 20,000 jobs, up 3.5% in Minnesota. And growth was propelled by healthcare and social assistance sector despite declines in educational services sector. Um, and the U.S. grew at a faster rate for this super sector at 4.2%. Uh, trade, transportation, and utilities gained almost 7,000 jobs, up 1.3%, uh, which is a faster growth rate than the national rate of 0.2%. And that growth was propelled by retail trade and wholesale trade, um, even though transportation, warehousing, and utilities declined. Leisure and hospitality is another big gainer. Um, they gain almost 6,500 jobs, up 2.6%. And all sectors um, under the super sector grew except for arts, entertainment, and recreation. And nationally, uh, the super sector grew at a similar rate of 2.8%. Uh, Other services gained more than 4,000 jobs, up 3.8% outpacing the national rate of 1.7%, and all sectors uh, posted growth in um, under other services. And lastly, mining and logging gained 809 jobs, up 14.1%. Um, it's, a, it's a smaller super sector, so the percentage growth um, is, is huge, and, and it's a much bigger rate than the national rate of 1.1%. And the super sectors that lost jobs over the year, um, the biggest loser was professional and business services. Uh, for Minnesota, they lost um, more than 11,600 jobs, down 3%, while the U.S. grew 0.7%. And most sectors uh, under this umbrella saw decline. Um, the biggest percentage decline was in employment services. 
Financial activities lost um, almost 4,500 jobs over the year, down 2.4%, while the U.S. grew 0.9%, and losses were consistent in every sector um, under financial services. Um, manufacturing also lost um, almost 2,400 jobs, down 0.7%, while the U.S. grew 0.2%. And we saw both durable goods and non-durable goods manufacturing sectors um, experiencing loss. Information lost more than 200 or 2,200 jobs, down 4.9%. And all subsectors saw decline here. Um, the U.S. also experienced decline in the super sector, um, also down 1.1%. And lastly, construction lost a little more than 2,200 jobs, down 1.9%. And losses were um, across all sectors, except for heavy and civil engineering construction, which we can we still see very high growth at uh, almost 18% growth over the year. Um, and the U.S. construction industry um, grew 2.8% over the year for comparison. Next slide, please. And our wage growth um, is still looking healthy. So average hourly wages for all private sector workers decreased um, a tiny bit, 33 cents to $36.87 in February. And that's over the month. And over the year, um, average hourly earnings increased by $1.56, which is a 4.4% growth rate. And nationally, um, the wage growth rate is 4.2%, and both of those um, rates beat the inflation rate of 3.2% for the same time period. And that is all I have. Kevin, back to you. Kevin, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you, Angelina. Um, Alicia, are we going to yeah. questions? We are. We are ready for questions. Feel free to use the raise hand feature or type them in the chat. Happy to take your questions. We've got Kavita. Over to you, please. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Um, Angelina, I was wondering if you could talk about that was a pretty big um, revision for the jobs for last month. Um, an increase of about 4,000 jobs, you said, so a total of 7,000 jobs last month. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what you, why you think there was, I mean, why there was such a big revision and <clears throat> why you think there was such big uh, job growth in January. And then by extension, like how come you think it like, um, you know, this February um, we were like um, behind the nation in terms of employment growth. The thing seems to slow down a lot. So what do you think might have happened there? And, you know, to what extent do you think like the warm, winter may have um, impacted the numbers there. <laughs> yeah, uh, all great questions. So in, in regards to the previous month's revision from December December to January, Kavita, I'm going to have to um, get back to you over email when I look at the uh, super sector details. Um, I haven't looked at um, why we saw a, uh, a positive revision uh, for the previous month. So I'll follow up with that. The second part of your question um, about February job growth, Minnesota has seen really strong job growth for a long time. Um, so it's normal that, you know, compared to over the month and over the year, we look like we're a little slower now, um, but we're not we're not declining. It's still we still see good steady growth. Um, so for February, it's a I would call it a steady month. We are, our economy is fine. It's strong, um, slower job growth, but it's not bad. And is there anything I noticed? Um, I was a little surprised to see that um, decline in construction jobs last month. Um, so like, you know, especially because of the warm weather, I would have thought that construction might have been like maybe a little bit higher. Um, so any thoughts about what was happening in construction and also like why government may have added so many jobs uh, in February? Yeah, so construction, um, we saw, yes, we saw some dip um, over the month, um, but over the year when we compare um, to 
uh, looking at February and January 2024 now and comparing it to January, February 2023, um, construction was very, very strong last year in 2023. So it looks like we, um, again, because we saw such such healthy growth in the past, it looks like we're declining now. But um, compared to like 2022, 2021, 2020, our construction jobs are still higher now. Um, so it's just a little spike that we saw in 2023, and that's why it, it looks like it's coming down in 2024. Um, but we have no concerns about um, construction jobs, um, you know, not doing well. Um, and then in terms of government, the gain in government over the month was mostly in local government, um, especially education. And that reflects hiring at elementary and secondary schools. Um, so schools have been doing a lot of hiring in the past year, and we are now back to pre-pandemic employment levels for um, education and, and local schools. Thanks, Angelina. Kavita, did we answer everything? Any additional follow-on questions there? Um, yeah, I guess I have like a couple more questions um, <laughs> if there's no other questions. Um, uh, have you guys um, seen any impact from the warm weather um, on job numbers or have you seen an uptick in jobless claims? I've just been talking to like, you know, like resort owners up north and, you know, there seemed to be a lot of talk about laying off people a little bit earlier, um, you know, a few weeks or um, earlier as for that seasonal work or um, so uh, I'm just wondering if you're seeing any evidence of that in your jobs numbers or, or um, unemployment claims. Yeah, so our our WARN team, our state rapid response team, um, has not seen any uptick in any large layoff activity um, for for employers who work with snow. Um, so nothing nothing notable. Um, the data on UI claims, unemployment insurance, um, is harder to parse down because snow-related occupations are in various sectors. So we can share with you what um, what we see. So over last February, we're seeing small decreases in statewide claims um, from administrative and wage services workers. Um, so that we are assuming that the snow, people who work with snow would fit into those categories. So um, administrative and waste services workers, um, less claims, 14.4% uh, less than the previous year, and public administration category workers, 8.9% um, less compared to previous years. Um, so we're not seeing anything um, that would tell a story that you know less no is is more uh, unemployment. Um, UI requests from tourism related um, sectors are up. So um, accommodations and food services, arts, entertainment, and recreation, and retail trade. Um, but these these sectors include many different occupations and not just no related um, work. So one factor could be that some of these jobs are seasonal and people either have other jobs in addition to their seasonal jobs or they're not eligible for um, UI benefits through their winter jobs alone. Um, so overall in February, UI requests are down almost 6% from a year ago. Um, and we haven't seen anything to, um, yeah, to substantiate the, the snow um, narrative. Thank you. And then one final question for um, Deputy Commissioner McKinnon. Um, you know, uh, you obviously announced these uh, Drive for Five um, <clears throat> recipients uh, grants earlier this week. Um, how soon do you expect to see a return on, you know, th those investments and those training programs? I mean, obviously now those those uh, organizations have to ramp up those training programs and you know, I think some of them are maybe, I think, a year long or longer. So how soon do you expect to see um, sort of a, an impact from this program? Yeah, good question, uh, Kavita. And, uh, you know, the way that the state works with these grantees is obviously we reimburse uh, for all the services that are provided. So, uh, at, you know, at this point, uh, the organizations who are our grantees will be uh, putting together cohorts and getting training together um, and and concurrently obviously working with some of the chambers and industry associations etc to be connecting those employers to uh, these types of uh, training programs so I would expect um, 
uh, relatively quickly um, that you'd see cohorts coming through. Um, depending on what type of training that they're actually in. Um, as you know, there's five different fields. Um, it could take a couple months to three months, um, you know, basically to start running people through. Others may be longer. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think we're planning on 1,200 or 1,500 uh, people being trained through this uh, program. Uh, it is really innovative in that we're engaging uh, the industry associations and the, the chambers of commerce in this work. Uh, they have been doing this, although uh, not necessarily as partners of ours, so we're really excited about that. Uh, partnership and from an engagement from an employer perspective, uh, because we do a lot with our nonprofit partners and uh, forcing those connections is going to be pretty important. So uh, I would expect that over the next uh, 12 months, you're going to see uh, a lot of people starting to be pushed through uh, those organizations. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. you, Deputy Commissioner. Yeah, thanks, Kavita. Any other questions that we can answer today? We have time for a few more. I, I want to loop back to Kavita's question about um, December to January revisions. Kavita, now that I have a chance to look at um, the revisions, some of the things that stand out to me. Um, so retail trade was revised downward, um, 1,300 jobs. Um, educational or healthcare and, sh and social assistance was revised downward, 800 and construction was revised down 700. So those are the big um, things that stand out. Whereas government, especially local government, was revised up um, 5,400 jobs. So most of the gains that in the revisions that we saw from December to January um, was from local government. Great. Great, thank you, Angelina. Any additional questions from members of the press? Right. Well, if you have any follow-up questions or you think of something a little bit later, please reach out to Mary Haugen on our team. She's your uh, daily point person here at DEED, so I dropped her name in the chat. And with that, I will turn it back over to our Deputy Commissioner to close us out for the day. Unmute, right? Uh, thank you, uh, Alicia, and thanks uh, for everyone that uh, participated today. Uh, appreciate uh, your ongoing interest and coverage of uh, uh, this for um, for the state. Uh, what uh, I would uh, also just close with is uh, obviously the labor market. Uh, held steady over the month, maintaining low unemployment and relatively high labor force participation rate. Our next unemployment numbers uh, will be released on April 18th. And again, thanks for attending and hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.